Hi guys, Aceface back with another video for you and I'm back with some advanced tyranny tactics, some advice from the hive mind. Today I'm going to be covering the mighty hive guard. Right guys, so before I get started, just want to point you in the direction that you can follow me on Facebook. Um, I post all my updated information, whatever's kind of coming up, whether there's sort of news and bits and pieces going on the channel, I put it up on, on uh, my Facebook page. You can follow me on Instagram, I'm most active there. I post all my work in progress pictures of whatever army I'm working on. Get a little sneak peek of battle reports of all sorts, everything that's going on, um, tournaments, whatever it might be, I put an awful lot on Instagram, so follow me on Instagram. If you want to support me further, you can through Patreon, you can get yourself exclusive Ace Face dice, Ace Face t-shirts uh, with a very, very unique design, we've got lots of stuff going on there. Um, you can also be part of a, an exclusive group and be part of our Discord server and have a chat and you can talk to me about lists, tactics, whatever you might be interested in, you can chat on there. Um, and hopefully I'm really looking forward to that taking off. Um, so yeah, loads of cool stuff there. So if you want to support me further, it helps me tons. Um, head over to my Patreon account and back me there. Uh, for just a dollar a month, that really helps me absolutely tons and tons. And of course, follow me over on Twisted Dice. Twisted Dice is our exclusive um, channel dedicated to, again, more wargaming goodness. We've really pushing the boat out on as much battle reports at the moment as we possibly can squeeze in. There's content coming out left, right and centre. You will get a battle report every week, um, dice by dice. Very, very cool from Twisted Dice Studios. Um, and yeah, loads of cool stuff we've got now. Pretty much every army you could possibly want to see, we've pretty much got in our collection now. So we've got a studio army covering most factions. Um, so loads and loads of cool stuff over there on the channel. So if you haven't already, do jump over and subscribe to Twisted Dice. But anyway, let's enough of that and let's go on to the subject of today, which is the Hive Guard and advice from the Hive Mind. So as always, I have my Tyranny Codex. Um, if you've watched one of these reviews before, you'll know that what we tend to do is rather than go into the basics and talk all around the actual unit itself, we very much talk about how to use these guys most effectively, how to get the best out of your unit um, and how to kind of utilize all their all their high fleets as well as the stratagems and the best loadouts for them. So the Hive Guard's quite a simple unit but very very key to a good effective balanced competitive Tyranid army. So they are um, kind of your mid-sized bugs um, and, and points-wise, they're pretty decent. They're not extremely resilient, but we'll talk about why that's probably not too much of a problem when we kind of go into the real details. So, the Hive Guard comes with two different options of guns. And this is why I say that this is not an all-round review and kind of detailed talk about the unit. It's much more around how to get most, of that, most out of the unit. So the two guns, one you have the Impaler Cannon, and two, you have the shot cannon. So today we're not really going to cover the shot cannon because as much as it has its uses and it's not terrible, it's by far inferior to the impaler cannon. Now if you don't agree with that, and there will be probably people that don't, that's really cool. So just put down in the comments below why you really rate the shot cannon and what you use it for and why you think it's the better option. Because not just myself, but I'm sure the other guys would be really, really interested to hear your kind of tactics and what you think. Now, I have briefly tested the shot cannon, um, and in a young girl um, detachment, um, potentially, you know, getting the using some deployment shenanigans, you can get them into an effective range. They are assault weapons, um, and you can do some mortal wounds off vehicles. But you know, to be honest with you, you probably going to struggle to use these guys effectively. So the Impaler Cannon is pretty much the one to go for in my opinion and going for the Impaler Cannon gives you some real good strategic advantages. So the big things around the, around the Impaler Cannon that are worth really noting and understanding why this unit is so effective. The first is that it is strength 8. 
Um, now strength 8 is kind of getting to your magic kind of strength and the reason why that is is because most vehicles, most kind of even to fairly heavy vehicles are kind of toughness 7 and the same with a lot of your big beasts, your Multarians, your Magnuses, a lot of the other big guys are toughness 7. So that means majority of the time you are either wounding on fours at worst and threes majority of the time and sometimes you know you're going for your softer targets you're even wounding on twos which is great that makes them incredibly effective because when you take that in comparison to the exocrine that is strength seven that a lot of people rave about does mean that they only really get up to your kind of your mid-range targets they aren't effective against the big stuff and particularly now when I'm recording this I know that knights are if I'm right, they should be around the corner. When you watch this, maybe they've even been released or on pre-order, who knows. But, knights are definitely going to be around soon. You're going to want something that can deal with these guys because I predict that they will swing the meta a little bit. Maybe wrong, but I think that they will have an impact. So, bearing in mind that that's going to potentially be the case, strength A is really important for Tyranids because we don't have a lot of high strength weaponry. We have a lot of DACA, we have pretty good assault, but even that sometimes can be lacking in strength that's effective. So having something that's strength eight is very, very effective. It's also minus two. Now minus two is, again is really good because minus two is all you really want to be able to make sure that things are either on their invon or the odds are they'll fail majority of their saves. Any more than that, Yes, it does give you a more reliability, but to be honest with you, a lot of the time it becomes overkill or you're hitting things with an invon save, so it makes no difference. So a minus two is good. The damage being a D3 is frustrating at times because that randomness is not really what you want because quite often you'll roll that one, but having the potential of three is great. And when I'm ever working with these units, I'll always work on it being two, go with the average, and see how you kind of get on. But, and here's a big but, it is only 36 inch range. Now 36 inch range, you might think, oh that's great, but actually bearing in mind that you don't want these guys moving because it's a heavy weapon, um, and, and you really, when we talk about how to use these guys, you don't want these guys running around the field, you want them pretty stationary. Because of that, 36 does give you some restrictions, does give you some limitations to that gun. So it's one to bear in mind. But the great thing about these guns is they do not lead line of sight. So you can hide these guys reliably, get out of line of sight, and be able to put these volleys of these high strength, high damage potential weapons. And that's where they're great. So, how to use these guys effectively and what to kind of go after? Well, we've started talking about it a little bit, but yeah, you want to be going after your bigger targets with these. These are even better than your elite killers. These want to be going after vehicles, they want to be going after monsters. That's their kind of ideal target. Yes, they'll go after things like, you know, like, like bikers. They're very effective at those, so, you know, great for custodes. You know, good chance you're just snapping off bikers left, right and centre. That strength 8 means you're reliably hurting them. And, and as I said, they're amazing at killing vehicles. Where to put these guys? Now, where you want to put these guys is, unsurprisingly enough, you want them out of line of sight. But also, there comes a lot of tactics when it comes to deploying because of that shorter range. So when you're placing your objectives, so if you're playing a, a random game where it's random um, placement of objectives, you want to be looking at placing your objectives where you can work out from no matter what deployment that you're going to go for, that objective you've got a good chance of having that covered by a 36 inch range within that deployment and with some cover. That's really important and you can do that really, really effectively. They will get their points back every time because where these guys come into their own is they can hit that danger zone, they can hit that centre table and advance from that, they can do damage too. So you want these guys covering objectives so they don't have to move. That way, as your opponent tries to get in range to take those objectives to start to advance up the board, that's when these Hive Guard are at their most effective and are taking out those units. And you 
you present the opponent with a kill zone somewhere. Look, don't go here because my hive guard are going to hose you down. That way it works in two ways. One, if they do come in that range, then that's exactly what you'll do. But also what you're doing is you're pushing them away from that objective. You're telling them, don't come to this objective because I'm going to kill you. That plays a psychological game with your opponent and makes them either decide to skirt around it or to take a risk and potentially go into the firing arc. That will start to take their attention off other targets, which is all part of that whole Tyranid game that we've spoken about in lots of the videos around just kind of making your opponent make, the, make bad decisions. Give them lots of threatening, threatening things going on, lots of congestion of targets and make them make decisions where potentially they're going to make errors. And that's where these guys are good. So you want to be looking at that. So don't put these guys on one side, down in one corner, because you think there's the cover. Don't do that. You want to be looking at putting these guys in a position where you know they're going to give cover, um, but you know that they're going to be really covering that um, that objective, that key area where you know your opponent is likely to come. And, you know, you've got... Because at 36 inch range, you can pretty much work it out from whatever deployment because you know that it, it could be, you know, it could be lengthways, could be sideways, but you've still got options there and you can kind of play around with that. And yeah, you won't cover every objective on the ball, but you will cover some. And that's a really, really clever way of doing it. The other thing to bear in mind with a hive guard is you need to know your meta. So, and I'll, and I'll talk a little bit about this. So, in a competitive environment, there are very different ways that, that TOs and tournament organisers, they, they, they set up their, their events. Some events you know are going to have a good spread of terrain, others you know won't. Some will have very femic terrain, but potentially won't have a lot of line of sight blocking. Others may have not particularly attractive terrain, but will have a lot of line of sight blocking. These are the things that you want to have a rough idea of when you're taking hive guard, because if they've got no line of sight cover, these guys are going to get blasted off the field very, very quickly, even with some supportive malanthropes or, or um, venomthropes, these guys still potentially become the target of a lot of fire because they're very, very dangerous. You don't want that to happen. So don't invest the points on a lot of these guys if you feel that you're not going to get an opportunity to hide them. They're just not going to be very effective. Particularly don't take multiple units if you know that terrain is going to be tight. And that kind of comes on to the next thing, which is around sort of what to take these guys in. Now we're going to talk about high fleets and we're going to talk about stratagems. But this will link in a little bit to this. You want to take, if you want to take these in the most effective, you want to take one unit of six, which is their maximum amount, and that will give you a maximum damage output. Bear in mind, you can spread their fire to different targets. They don't all need to go into the same target, so you can spread them around. But you want one big unit to make the most of these guys, and I will talk about why going forward. And yes, it would be nice to have a couple of units of three rather than one unit of six, but because that then gives you a variety of covering more of those objectives, but having the unit of six means you've got that real opportunity to maximize that damage output. And as I said, we will talk about that in a second, but that's my advice. And I would say that because of the risks with terrain, I think one unit of six is the best way to take these in your army. I would not take more personally. Take one unit of them, know that they have one job for you, this is their job, this is their role, that's quite a big, they're quite big models really to have six of them hiding something. You don't then want to be having more and having to hide them, particularly if they're complementing other shooter units in your army, i.e. exocrines, or more likely biovores. Even after their points increased, biovores are still a great unit and you'll probably want to have them hiding as well. So more than six hive guards is going to start to become a tactical issue when you come to actually giving these guys some line of sight blocking. Okay, so that's how I would take them. I would take them in a unit of six and I would be looking to deploy them in a place where they cover an objective to make sure that they are used, that they are used to their maximum. Now let's talk about high fleets. We like to talk about high fleets before we go on to the stratagems um, and let's have a look at high fleets. So with the high fleets there is there's one that pretty much stands out head and shoulders over everything else and to the degree we won't go over every single high fleet to use them in. 
but there is a second one that is also pretty useful. So, the two ones that you want to be thinking about, bear in mind these guys have only one task and that is shooting. They, they, they can't charge, you know, they're just, that's, that's all they're going to be really, really useful for is, is, is for shooting. So because of that, anything Kraken, Bearmouth, Gorgon, Hydra are on the whole going to be pretty useless for this particular unit. The are the the high fleets that will have a use to them are Leviathan, Kronos, and Yunganda. So let's start off with Leviathan. Leviathan's handy just because it makes them a little bit more survivable. You're probably going to want a, a Synapse creature close to them anyway to make sure that they are picking their target without any minuses. So due to that, that means that they're likely to be able to get that 6 up after save, which is cool. And it is very, very useful and will make them that little bit more survivable. So definitely one to consider Leviathan. It generally complements most Tyranid builds and is a good no-brainer to your army. So if you're unsure, and, and you've got lots of other things going on in your army, going for, for a Leviathan detachment and having these guys in it is not a bad thing. Yomanganda is also not bad at all, but the big thing with Yomanganda, so basically what it does is it's going to give you cover no matter what. So it's going to give you a plus one to their save, which, which yes, makes them better, but they are infantry anyway, so you're probably going to have them in cover anyway, and... The most important thing is with these guys, they don't really want to just be in cover, they want to be hidden, they want to be out of line of sight, they don't want to be seen, so having that plus one cover predominantly is not that great, but the one that is incredibly good and takes these guys from being good to amazing is Kronos. Kronos means when you stand still you get re-rolled ones to shooting so bear in mind these guys already hit on threes which is very effective within the Tyranid Codex as most things hit on fours so they hit on threes but they also re-roll ones that means that these guys are hitting a lot of the time that makes them very effective. That means you're going to get more bang for your buck. So actually, you're going to take a unit of six of these. You're going to take them in a Kronos detachment every time you possibly can. Um, and literally, for me, yes, Leviathan, if you've got a lot else going on, they're not, they don't break the bank on points. But really, you want to use these guys most effectively, most competitively. They always want to be in a Kronos detachment. Always, always, always. And if you disagree again, chuck it down in the comments. Really interested to hear your reasoning why you don't think that is by far the best. So, that's your high fleets. Now, we're going to stratagems. And again, this is a whistle-stop tour of stratagems, guys. Because there isn't that much in here that is very, very good for a hive guard. Um, in fact, I very much struggle to think of any other stratagems in here, bar one, that you would use. Um, you just wouldn't really use anything. Um, you just wouldn't. So, the only really one that we're going to talk about, because there's probably tenuous ones in here, and again, if there's things that you've worked that work really well for your hive guard, then put it in the comments, because I know that people would really love to hear your thoughts. But the way to use these guys, without a doubt, is to use them in the single-minded mi single annihilation. So it's 2 CP, so it's quite expensive, but basically what it does, in a nutshell, is it allows your infantry unit to shoot again. So bear in mind these guys have two shots each. Um, you've got a unit of six of them, so you've got 12 shots normally. You're now 24 shots with a second shot. Strength eight. You're taking them in Kronos, so they're re-rolling ones, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, wounding almost anything on a four and most things on a three. With a minus two and D3 damage, these guys are going to do your enemy a lot of harm, and that's where they're best at. So you want to be building enough CPs in your army to be doing that stratagem every single turn. Every, like Literally, make it a given. So you need to have that. 
that at least for let's say bare minimum the first three turns you want to have six cps ready for these guys to shoot 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 you want to be doing that because 24 shots is going to make these guys scary it's going to make these guys so so effective so put that in your planning it's really easy to get a lot of cps with tyrannids really really easy um, our troops are very cheap so it's not too bad at all so you can easily get enough to do this but you want to be building that in you want to have six cps stored up for your hive guard and you want to have and this is going back to what we said before you want to have that unit of six to make sure that when you're using because you can only use one stratagem you can only use a stratagem once per phase so because of that you're only going to use this once um, per turn so you need to have those two CPs and you need to have a unit of six to maximize the effectiveness of that of that stratagem and you want it to be Kronos because again you want to maximize it this is all around efficiencies and how you push the most out of that unit and this is by far the best way to push the most out of that unit so in summary what we want to talk about so in summary the way to take these guys is take them in a slightly balanced list because if you just have everything hiding you will run out of hiding spots so you need a bit of variety you need stuff that is going to go out in your opponent's face create you a bit of a screen but also create your hive guard some distraction you don't want guys getting to them quickly because they will die so easily so you want that screen you want that distraction away from them then as a complementary unit you want to make sure they've got some synapse Synapse in the form of a Malanthrope is always great, but to be honest, probably a humble um, Neurothrope will do the job nicely because generally, bearing in mind, you don't want these guys to be seen anyway. So a Malanthrope being there to give them their Synapse, giving them that minus one shouldn't be a factor because you shouldn't be able to see them if you've deployed them right or you've got terrain that's correct, giving you enough cover. So a Neuronthrope's fine, there's nothing wrong with a Malanthrope, they are a good unit. But that's kind of what you want them in tow with. I think a splattering of Biovores as well around them, again some shooting, give themselves a little bit extra range as well, is a great complementary unit for them. And then you have your Screams, you have your attacking units, you have your aggressive units that are buying that Hive Guard time. That's how I build them, I always build them in a Kronos army. And I'd be very, very careful how I deploy them. Don't just throw these guys down in any in any bit of cover, thinking, "Well, I can't. They can't see me there. I'll just stick them there. That's fine." No, you need to be looking at where those objectives are, and you need to be placing those objectives, bearing in mind where your hive guard might be, so you can start planning your deployment for your hive guard even before deployment. When you come into those objectives. Just bearing in mind where those deployment zones are likely to possibly be and start to work out where you want to place those objectives to make sure you've got good firing fields for your hive guard. And 36 inches on the whole is a good little danger zone for Tyranids, so it's always something to bear in mind. Where is that objective? Is it 36 inches away from where I possibly will likely to be? Yes, it is. Great, cool. That's where I want to be putting them. I don't want to be putting them the other side. Actually, if I've got my hive guard and I can cover two objectives, then I'm absolutely quids in. This is the sort of things you want to be thinking about, bearing that in mind. So hopefully that's useful. If you're looking for other Tyranid tactics and other adv advanced tactics from the hive mind, I have got a, pl a playlist. There'll be more coming, so um, hopefully uh, I'll bring you some more tactics very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Check me out on Twisted Dice, and we'll see you really soon. Bye for now.